Welcome to the Mass Transit Bus Stop, where we kind of sit down together and kind of talk about what's going on. And, and speaking of what's going on, Drew, what's going on? <laughs> well, today I have been enjoying this thread on Reddit about message queues. And the original poster is just kind of asking this question of, I think I want this. I'm not necessarily sure. Uh, am I going to use this product or that product? And in and of itself, this is a question that we see all the time. But there was, in the comments, where the gold is, uh, in the comments, another a responder asks, I think, the very relevant question of, do you even need like a message broker, a separate process to do what this thing is? Like, why can't you just use your database? And so something, uh, yeah. So Chris, what's, what's your take on that? You've been working on messaging for God knows how long now. <laughs> yeah. Like, do you have some words of advice? So let's 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 break that down a little bit. I'd say it comes down to what are they trying to do? I mean, a lot of times it's like, hey, do I need messaging? Well, I want asynchronous processing. Okay, I want to be able to like do a database transaction and then have something run after the fact that isn't a trigger in the database. Or you know, with the release of Mass Transit's Outbox, which is, you know, if you're not using it, it's pretty cool. It actually lets you write messages to a broker without even connecting to the broker. You can just write them as part of a transaction in your database, and then Mass Transit will deliver those in the background to RabbitMQ, Azure Service Bus, whatever. And so you get that transactional consistency of producing messages without having to actually you know, right to the broker. So it's kind of a cool, but you're using the same primitives. You're using the same business components. You don't have to change anything. You just enable it and it works. And while I was building that, you know, I started to kind of think, it's like, how far is this from like being able to say, oh, I just want to do messaging with the database. And it turns out the leap is actually pretty far because I think, you know, 10 years ago, people were asking the question, this the very same question. Why do I need a message broker? I already have a database. Can I just create a table called Q and put messages in it? And back then, I mean, it was an adamant, absolutely not. Your database was not built to be a Q. It was not designed to be a Q. You should never, ever use it as a Q. And if you go search for Postgres Q, you will find a thousand search results of people who said, I needed simple, basic, asynchronous message processing, and I didn't want to bring in an additional complexity of a broker. And let me interject real quick. Chris, can you give us a quick summary of like why we shouldn't use the database as a queue? It stores data. I can get it out. It's fast. Gosh darn it, why isn't it good enough? <laughs> That's a great question. So yes, it stores data. And it's designed to store data transactionally, which, again, a lot of people are using transactions. Their Sounds operations. like my message queue. I want my yeah. message there, and then I don't want it there. Sure, sure. And, you know, it's fast. Well, that's a question to ask yourself, because when you think about a queue, it's like put things in the back, take things off the front. And when you do, you know, the argument has always been made that when you do that with a database, it's like, well, database have indices, they have fragmentation. It's not really meant for, you know, writing a ton of stuff and deleting a ton of stuff. It's meant for writing data and, you know, eventually, you know, purging it out. We're just purging it out really quick. I mean, the happiest place for a queue in a message-based system to be is empty. But then you start, you know, talking about some of the other things you need to do, like, oh, well, I need to train, I need to re-deliver the message if, you know, the processing isn't successful, or I need to, you know, um, stay within a transaction, or I need to schedule a message. You know, sch message scheduling is a big thing, and some brokers have really good support for it, some have limited support, but you know, databases are just tables. You could just put a column on there called read when it's 2 p.m. And if you're trying to read it before 2 p.m., it just says, eh, I got nothing here. So, you know, databases offer a lot of kind of the storage guarantees and capabilities that you'd want for a message store. But then the other question you said, is it fast? You know, what is the throughput? But let, let's define fast in terms of business requirements. You know, and I don't know the thread you're talking about, but I would bet one of the arguments was, I'm doing 10 messages a minute. Do I really need a broker? <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, we're not all web Which we scale. get all the time, right? Like, oh, I for mean, sure. that was how you and I started. I had 12 messages a day, but I needed this kind of programming model because each one was worth bajillions of dollars. Oh, for sure. That's banking 101. It's like, hey, this transaction has to be perfect because it's $1.2 billion. And I needed to go through this series of steps and I need this like external audit logging when these events happen. 
Yeah. 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 So there's, there's definitely, and so what, what have we seen since then? I mean, I've, you know, I've taken a pretty recent look at Postgres because I've been building some apps with it and the stuff you can do in there is crazy. I mean, the PG notify, you know, PG subscribe, basically the ability to push events to through database connections, it's starting to smell like a broker. You know, you look at Redis and Redis has PubSub and it's a completely different approach to the way Redis does PubSub. But again, it's starting to creep into that space mm -hmm. and you're seeing, you're seeing some optimized models in terms of how like Postgres does storage to where it's like, okay, maybe the scavenging and, you know, all the empty pages and records and locks and everything aren't as big a deal as they were before. You know, we're no longer on 5,400 RPM spinning platters of rust. We're all on SSDs. Anybody running an enterprise system is running on SSDs or they're running on cloud-based storage, which has its own set of, you know. Or they're running in memory. Yeah, or they're just running in RAM. Yeah, so... So there's a lot of like reasons where like maybe it is time to look at that again. The biggest thing, like I said, I wrote the outbox and then I look at how people are using things like job consumers. Mm. And in a lot of like when people go straight and into remind job me consumer, what a job consumer is again. So mass transit consumers run off message queue messages and brokers typically have an amount of time that they want a message to be locked. So when mass transit delivers a message, it like puts it, it reads it from the queue, it locks it. And then it lets your consumer process it. And once your consumer is done, Mass Transit will either acknowledge or negatively acknowledge that message. What job consumers do is say, hey, I know this is going to take three hours. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, parsing the text of War and Peace. And I want to be able to, you know, do this without having to worry about the connectivity to the broker. So what job consumers do is they actually use some sagas to track the state of that message as it's being processed and then run that on a node. And so that node runs, it takes three hours, and when it's done, it reports the status back. And the job consumer facilities within mass transit keep track of that running consumer. They ping it every minute and say, hey, are you still running? Are we all still good? Or do I need to like go into recovery and fail over? And so it's a, it's a longer running consumer model that is kind of similar to how like you might just do a background job using like something like quartz or hang fire. Now, so the the thing that triggered it for me again was, you know, people tend to some people were jumping straight into job consumers and I was like, "Why?" and they're like, "Well, I really just want background processing." And then I got another comment that was like, "Hey, how can I use mediator with Outbox?" And this is kind of like the Disney story. If anybody's gone to like Disney school, it's like they train you. It's like if you're working at Disney and someone comes up and say, hey, it's what, what, what time is the 3 p.m. parade? It seems like kind of a ridiculous question, but the reality is they're probably not really asking like, is it at three o'clock? But like maybe where do I want to watch it from or where's a good place to see it? Or do I need to be in a certain area? There's, there's the question behind the question. So when I heard the question of, can I use the bus out box with mediator? It's like, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, so what they really want is they want to be able to produce a message in a transaction of a database and have some asynchronous consumer processing it later. And so that again goes back to, well, maybe there is this case to have like a database transport that says, hey, already have Postgres, already have SQL Server, you can use mass transit, do all of your messaging, without even introducing a broker and yet take advantage of all the same capabilities, retry, redelivery, transactional processing would be a new capability because the transport would provide that. Maybe that's a thing. So, you know, that would definitely have been nice in a lot of the smaller projects that I've worked on over the years where, again, I have a low message volume, but this is a programming model that I'm comfortable with. And if I could have just deployed it on top of the database, that's like one less thing I got to get operations to stand up. It's one less thing that the next developer is going to have to necessarily understand. If it's just all in the database and I can just use my SQL tools to poke at it and see what's going on, that's, that's really nice. Yeah, and I think that's where some people are is, again, from an operational perspective, do I want to stand it up? Now, if you're deploying applications in the cloud, the, the real easy answer is, oh, reach for a cloud AMQP, use oh, Azure sure. Service Bus. You know, it's, it's, it's an incremental cost. You don't have to worry about it. But what if you aren't? And the, the phrase that you said that kind of gets it down is, what's the programming model? If I like writing consumers and producing events and building, you know, an event-driven architecture, you know, is it something that would make sense, especially when you're talking that most businesses don't do a whole lot of volume? Mm -hmm. I mean, relatively. I mean, I think... 
I did some relative to what a database can do these days. Yeah, exactly. I mean, just a small Postgres instance, a hundred messages a second is easy. Yeah. If that's the case and your message volume is 14 messages a day or even 14 messages a second, Mm -hmm. do you necessarily, and if you're a small shop and don't want to have the operational complexity and set up all the monitoring tools, you know, maybe that's, maybe there's a place for that and it doesn't exist today, but. And I like this as a graduated step function where any place where it's like, how can I make the barrier to entry even lower, but provide escape hatches? And I feel like we've seen this with MT already, where I can develop locally against RabbitMQ, but deploy to Azure Service Bus. And that is a very common pattern that we see. How cool would it be if it was, I'm going to develop against the database locally, because then I just have one process running. But then when I go to production, I'm going to switch out to Azure Service Bus. Or what I'd like to think is a little more realistic is I'm just starting and I like just it's too much for me to process. Let me start with the database. Okay, now I'm comfortable with it. Let me upgrade to an actual message broker. Yeah, I mean, I I definitely see that from a getting started perspective. I mean, Mass Transit has always had the in-memory transport, which is great for just getting familiar with the programming model and running in memory. And 100% on the whole RabbitMQ Azure Service Bus, there are so many people that do that, that like they develop locally and they deploy to Azure Service Bus for production. It, it's a great model. It's the same components on MT's side. It's just managing that. You know, the other interesting thing about that is if you say had a database transport that was running in the small or not even in the small, maybe it's running, you know, within kind of your core application that is very transaction focused. What, what would it take to say, okay, well now I want to be able to link that tr- database as a transport and be able to move messages out to another broker. So have like the dif- differentiation between like internal message dispatch and then communicating with external brokers, like, keep my tight stuff that's transactional tight within the database, but then be sure to move those events out to say Azure Service Bus or RabbitMQ or even an SQS SNS to allow the rest of the application to take advantage of those public events versus ones that I might just be dealing with internally. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, Chris, I hope you spend some time looking at the database transport, because that sounds really cool. <laughs> maybe it is, maybe it isn't. If you think that's something that would be cool, leave a comment down below. Um, you know, it's it's one of those things that always, you know, how hard could it be, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but what about? Oh, but what about? Oh, yeah. but what about? <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, good talk. I mean, that's an interesting thread. I'm going to have to go track that one down. You can always find some little gems on Reddit. And you're absolutely right. The gold is in the comments. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. We'll see you at the next bus stop. All right. Peace.